Hey Dreamers, I'm Bryce from Midnight Notion, singer, songwriter, musician, and big fan of Metallica, but I have no idea what my favorite Metallica song is. Could it be 2 by 4 Let's use math to find out. Cue the intro! So Ted, give it to me now! For the best Metallica song! Two by four, track number two off of Load. And um, I guess if they were following the order of all their other records, wouldn't this be like the name of the record? If Load wasn't the name, wouldn't it be called two by four? I don't know. They usually name it after the second song. I guess they didn't with the Black Album. But I digress. We're going to listen to the song today. I'm going to blah, blah, blah my way through it. And then I'm going to grade it using the following categories. We got lyrics, instrumentation, composition, memorability, and the emotional response. Each one is a zero to four scale with a grand total possible of 20 points. We'll see at the end if it has 18 or more that it makes it to the top 10. I have a feeling it's not going to get there. I know this is, I, I, I can understand that if you were a fan of Metallica in the 80s and you were following their career and you got to this record, Ain't My Bitch might have made you go, oh yeah, I like this. And then 2 by 4 might have made you go, huh. At least that's how I feel. So let's give the song a fair chance. We're not going to judge it before listening to it. We're going to make sure we hear it. But I will be up front with you. I don't listen to the song very often. I don't really have this one memorized that. I've probably only listened to it a handful of times. The band has only played it ten times. So let's find out what we're getting ourselves into. All I know is I really love this drum fill in the beginning. The triplet fill. Lots of triplets in this record. I know he learned them. In the, we talked about how Lars learned how to do triplets in the last record. This record, he just goes, you know what? I'm going to make all my fills triplets. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-bo. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Do. It's just all over the place. I'm going to point it out every time, too. <laughs> I do have to say, this riff is freaking meaty as hell, isn't it? It just, it really freaking, like, there's something about uh, the fact that he's using the crash symbol and it's only on the, on the, on the downbeat, so boo, 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 and then his drums aren't, don't, they're not emphasizing what the guitars are playing. He's not boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom, right? He's just going boom, ka, boom, ka. It's just a straight pattern, Uh, no complexity to it whatsoever, but that gives room for the guitars to riff. And we've got the shuffle beat on the guitars. Boo, but did it do 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 do. It's got a very one and a two and a three and a four and a, if you don't know what a shuffle beat is, it sounds like it's in six, eight, right? It feels in groups of threes, but it's still four, four. It's just got a da 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 dancey groove to it. Really cool, really cool bluesy, low crunchy riff. A lot of this song is really trying to get that like, mm, I'm a man. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a beat you up. I'm a beat you up because I'm a man. A little wah guitar. Does anyone hear the the vocals for the verses of the song and immediately start thinking of Shania Twain? Anyone? Anyone else? That's another one. There's like a a China a China symbol with the kick drum, and then the snare uh, being the, the like the China's the one and the snare's the and. Do do do. He does that riff a lot. I love those offbeats. The, we're going on that straight boom, cha, boom, cha, boom, 
cha boom ba boop ba da yeah it's really cool it's really cool emphasizing those offbeats i do love this gro the groove of this song is really cool really cool I get it. I, I do. I really get it. It's so different from everything Kill 'em All to Black album. It is very, very different. I need to re-emphasize this for the haters out there. Artists need to grow. Not many artists could take the same route all the way through their career and actually make something good out of it. If you're listening to this record and you're going, oh, this isn't like the old stuff, that's the freaking point, all right? If you want the old stuff, Go listen to the old stuff. If you don't like the new stuff, I'm sorry, but you're not a fan. Well, I, I should take that back. It's not that you're not a fan, but you're not a fan of the band as a band. You're a fan of their old stuff and you're stuck in the past. If you can't grow with the artist, then find a new artist. Go listen to some other band that does what you want them to do. You don't have to listen to this band. But if you're going to call yourself a fan of the band, you got to know, you got to recognize that they have really beautiful stuff in their entire catalog. And just because they're trying something new doesn't mean that they've suddenly sold out or they're, blah, blah, they're not as cool as they used to. They're trying something new. It may not work for you. It may not work for me, but it doesn't mean we should just dismiss him immediately. Because again, this era of Metallica, they're at the height of their career. They're selling out stadiums worldwide constantly. They're playing a show every other night for years on end. These guys have made it and we have to celebrate it because, because I mean, that's the goal. When you're a young kid and you're starting a band, you're dreaming of the bright lights they got there and they continue to get the, this. They're still doing this. They're still doing this stuff. They survived when all other artists kind of fall off the face of the earth, right? You go listen to some other band from this era. They're still playing their old stuff because they can't make anything new. Metallica has always been reinventing themselves. They've all been always been trying something new. And even though those first four ish albums sound pretty similar, they were doing something new and unique each time. So the the fact that they're experimenting with a different sound doesn't make this bad. It makes them a band who recognizes artistry and is trying to grow. That is a good thing. Does this song last? Does it stand the test of time? Well, I don't know. Maybe not so much, but I do appreciate that they're trying something new and we can't just write that off immediately. I'm just saying. Rant over. <laughs> He's, he's singing his heart out. This this guy's really letting it out. He's really showing off his vocals here. Not that it's the most amazing song in the world, right? It's not something that's like just blowing our minds. Like the, there are obviously other singers out there who are just, you know, making long runs. But if you compare this voice to 1983 James Hetfield... There's no competition. This guy has learned. He's learned how to sing. There's a lot of layered harmonies. He's going from eh, those really high. I don't. I'm not gonna hit the note. And then he's got the hey, hard, hard, ah, you know. And so he's got this really far range, and he's using it. And that's a plus for me. This section. 
this section right here is the one that kind of loses me. The main riff, the the verses, they're all pretty cool. But then when we get to this retribution, it's kind of, like, again, I said it's different. I appreciate the experimentation. But this is where the song kind of eh, falls into the meh category, specifically because of this part. Uh, I want to hear what's going on here. There's like a, a higher guitar going just kind of... The other guitars, they're only doing like a part of the riff. They're holding it out a little bit longer. Um, it's fine. It's passable. It's not the worst thing they've ever written, but it just kind of sits in that. I don't know if this is one's for me. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Are you talking to me? I can't hear you. There it is. There's that there's that China and snare fill. I want to show it to you one more time. Listen for it. He does that all the time. Now I like this. Ooh, ride symbol. The return of the ride symbol. It's back. It's back. Yeah, I love this part. A little splash. It's a tiny little symbol. It's about this big. Psst. There it is. I really appreciate this section of the song. It's there's something about coming into that halftime feel, and it's it's got a real slow dirge to it. Boo, boo, and then this is this is funny. This is kind of the record where Lars started going, "Hey, if it's a slow part of the song." And we're playing with like kind of cleaner guitars or we're going for more of a halftime feel. Instead of just playing straight, boom, ka, I could just go to town on the tom so he can't, because he, he can't not do it. He can't just play it straight. Boom. I don't know. It's just, it's funny to me. It's, it's classic Lars. It's not a problem. I just think it's funny to point it out. I'm just saying. I appreciate the arpeggiating guitar. Do, 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 do. Really cool. We got the same fill from the intro. I want to point out how I think that this section of the song is probably the best part of this entire song. I think it really stands out. It's really fun. It's cool that it starts, you know, kind of slower. He's sitting on the ride cymbal from the drums perspective. He's starting with the ride cymbal and he's just casually kind of hitting it. And then he's using the splash cymbal because it's smaller and it doesn't ring out. Pssst. But then he eventually starts, you know, he starts throwing in those tom fills and then he starts cracking the snare and the cymbals, the regular crash cymbals. And then all of a sudden, by the end, he's riding on the crash cymbal. He's no longer on the ride. The ride has that soft ping, ping, ping. But the crashes have like a big, big 
bigness to them. And then meanwhile, the rhythm guitars, they're starting off with this just kind of holding out notes. And then they kind of casually grow into this arpeggiating do, 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 do. I'm getting the notes wrong, obviously. And then they're going into more thicker, more distorted guitar. They're good. They're building everything all together. And then we have this nice little build, the guitar is soloing over it. It's not really a solo solo. It's more like a melodic solo, right? He's not really going to town. He's just kind of keeping it cool. And then we got the intro riff, and then we're back to it. this sucker some points shall we lyrics what is this song about (laughs) this it's i mean do we do we have to call somebody do we have to get the fbi involved it sounds here like metallica's uh potentially murdered somebody (laughs) like you're gonna meet my lord is that seriously what he said come and meet my lord i'm gonna put the screws into you my way and then talk to two by four are you kidding me did james just straight up murder somebody he took a board with a screw in it and he whacked someone over the head using friction and fusing the the nail in and like (laughs) i don't know again i'm gonna point it out again the rock and metal scene has always had a little bit of an issue with um, that machismo, like bravado, like, oh, we, me, man, <laughs> right? We strong men, we beat stuff up, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, man. It just doesn't, it's, it's weird to me. It doesn't hold up to 2020. If I was a teenager and I was listening to this song and I had a bunch of aggression to get out, I might think that this was like all cool and stuff. But let's be honest. I don't promote violence. I'm not about going and hurting people, right? You got problems with someone, tell them to their face. If they cannot take the honest feedback, then it's time to just walk away, man. Because it's friggin' don't, don't, don't murder people, please. Please don't murder people. It's bad. It's wrong. And there should be a new word like bad wrong or badong. Anyway, I don't promote violence. The words don't really say anything. For a song that's six and a half minutes long, something like that, basically it all comprises of I can't hear you, so talk to me. But then instead of talking to me, you're talking to two by four and you're just going to straight up get murdered. And... I don't know. Look at this friggin' background. I'm telling you, they're trying to prove something and it just, it doesn't work on me. I'm sorry. These lyrics, they're not for me. There's some cool stuff maybe going on, but I really don't care. You turn me off, man. I'm not about that violent life. Lyrically, it's a zero. Instrumentation. On the upside, there's a lot of really cool things to like in this song. I think it's cool that it has that shuffle beat. The grooves are really groovy, right? We got a lot of the, even the wah guitar is really like, it's not like soloing, it's singing. It's uh, playing a line. It's like its own new melody. I appreciate how the instruments are playing together and I really love that middle section. When we go into halftime, Oh, it just sounds beautiful. I think if you took out these lyrics or if you wrote about something completely different, I don't know, maybe you'll have to tell me. Maybe the song's not about beating someone over the head with a two by four, but that's what it sounds like to me. So maybe if it's maybe if he's talking about the house he's building, right? Maybe Jack is building a house, and while Jack is building, he's like talking to the, he's talking to the wood. All right, hey, you uh, foundation, talk to two by four. 
hammer, hammer, hammer. But anyway, I digress. If I take out the lyrics and I just listen to the instruments, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here. And also, if you take out the words, you don't hear that weird fusion. So maybe the song's better as an instrumental. I don't know. But ultimately, I like what's going on here. They can do better. It is uh, still falling into the category. Well, we'll talk about that in the next category. But instrumentally, I think they did a fine job. We'll give them some positive points. This one gets a three. Composition. Here's where I don't know how I feel about it, because again, verse, chorus. Well, I don't even know what the chorus is of this song. We have a lot of pieces of this song that repeat. I do appreciate how each verse or maybe chorus, I don't know, it's kind of breaking the form a little bit because the verses and choruses are about equal length. And you don't really know which one is which because it feels like the verse repeats. But then it feels like the chorus, I don't know. I don't know which part is which. So because of that, that's kind of neat. Um, but it does kind of feel like it's going verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, chorus. It feels like that. Compositionally, there's nothing really stand out about this song. Again, I like that middle section, but there aren't any really significant change-ups. There's nothing really new. It's not like a clean riff that builds to get uh, more distorted or inverted of that, a distorted riff going clean. There's not like some grand outro that like blows you out of the water. Nothing really, I, I don't know which way to go on this one. So compositionally, got to give it a safe two. Memorability. I can't hear you. Are you talking to me? I can't hear you. Come talk to me. I can't hear you. Are you talking to me? I mean, how many times do you have to say that in a song before? I mean, to me, that sounds pretty memorable. They say the same thing over and over. You're going to remember it. Uh, but is it something you want to remember? Ah, uh, maybe not so much. I do think that just that intro drum fill is pretty cool. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I've played that a bunch of times. Whenever I sit down to a drum kit, I do like that triplet feel, right? It's really cool. So that's pretty memorable. The main riff has got a nice hook to it, uh, but overall the words just kind of meh to me. So I don't know. The song kind of sits in the middle. I can't really give it positive points. I can't really give it negative points. It just sits in the meh. So memorability. We're giving it a two. Emotional response. I have to admit, I am. Uh, I came into this song prepared to give it a big old zero, but I'm pretty surprised. For a song that they haven't played since basically right away after they wrote it, um, it actually has a nice groove to it. I really appreciate that middle section, more so than I thought I would. Um, there's a lot of fun riffs. Um, and even the, the weird harmony bit that I don't like as much kind of starts to grow on you after a while. Uh, I can see that people would hear this as the second track and go, nope, I'm out. Right? They were maybe offended by the first track, and then they heard this one, and they're just like, this band has jumped the shark, I'm gone. But to be honest, I don't know. I was surprised. I liked this song more now that I haven't heard it in a long time. And giving it an open set of ears and an open mind, uh, I've got a new appreciation for it. I can't say that I'm extremely positive. I don't really love it, um, but I definitely don't hate it. So again, uh, emotional response, I'm going to give this a nice middle two. And so 2 by 4 gets a grand total of 9 points, and you know that's definitely not enough for the top 10. It is currently in 40th place out of 49 so far. So it didn't really do too well, but not on the bottom. I expected it to do much worse. So, I don't know, I'm pretty happy. It's a fairly average score, I believe, but, you know... Yeah, you know, we've got more to come that's going to be far, far better. So let's take a look at that top 10 board. One is still at the top through the nevers on the chopping block. We still got a tie, our first ever tie for third place uh, with, between Puppets and Wolf. And uh, now, now it's your turn in the comments below. Using my system, tell me what score you would give this song. And be honest with me. Don't don't say, oh, ba ba da ba da ba da Like, actually try it out. This is harder than it sounds. I've been doing this for 49 episodes, and I, I'm, I'm going to be getting attacked. I just know it. So don't attack too hard. We're all friends here. Let's come together as fans of the band and just really, really analyze what score would you get this song. Uh, make sure you check out Midnight Notion, my own music, 
music that I make. I swear, I make it. It's all me. Uh, I do have a band that helps me play live, but I appreciate your patronage. So check it out on Spotify, iTunes, uh, CD Baby, wherever you get your music online. And smash that subscribe button so that you can be here tomorrow as we go through the house like Jack built. And maybe he's going to yell at some nails and boards while he's building it. I don't know. Thanks for watching.